Hey everybody, Phantom Shadow here, and welcome back to more Root Film. Let's continue. Kuramochi's gate is sealed off with police tape, with imposing police officers coming in and out. The on-site investigation must be underway. Doesn't seem like Studio Yagamo can get in. Director, I don't think they'll let us in. Well, I figured, but I'd like to shoot inside. Think we can find a way? Please don't force your way in, you got like a 100% chance of getting busted. I know, I know, just spitballing here. Like hell you were, your eyes were dead serious. Relax, there's no way I'd actually do it, not me. Real convincing there. Magari feels awkwardly unsure if Yagamo is seriously considering trespassing. Meanwhile, Hitoha tries to get their attention. Hmm? What's up? Over there. Without another word, Hitoha motions her eyes towards what's beside the gate. Two detectives are eyeing them suspiciously as they whisper amongst themselves. Since these detectives weren't here last night, they must not belong to the local first responders or the riot squad, but the prefectural all police. They stop talking, exchange glances, and start slowly approaching. Crap. Run. Roger. Hmm. Magari and Kanade seem quite accustomed to running away. Come on, you too, Hatoa. Okay. Yagamo grabs her by the hand and runs off. Studio Yagamo runs like the wind as the detectives angrily shout behind him. Things could have gotten dicey back there. Let's look somewhere else for the time being. Unlike yesterday, there are a few people there are a few people to be seen at Yasaka Shrine. It sure is quiet today, but I like it this way. Me too. Shrines are pretty nice on sunny days and a quiet mood suits them better. Yeah. Hitoa smiles and nods. Yagamo can't help but smile back before he gives Kanade instructions. Kanade. Get me some cuts of the shrine without any people. Mm-hmm. As instructed, Kanade shoulders the camera and moves towards the main building. He waits for people to move out of the way. A man with a camera seems to take the hint. He lightly bows before leaving. Sorry about that. Thanks. No worries. We're all journal journalists here, right? You with the news station? No, we're just location scouting. You're shooting for a magazine? Yes, I'm... To Tokima. I'm on the editorial department for men's travels. I read your magazine from time to time. You got good taste. Thanks, I'm glad to hear it. Gonna do a deep dive special feature on Suwano, so please check it out when it hits the shelves. The magazine editor named Tokima has a friendly chat with Yakumo before he excludes himself to do more photography. The Muromachi era Washihara Hachimangu Shrine has a two story Roman gate and is desi designed, designated as a nationally important cultural property. Behind the main building is a bridge leading to the annex, and the architectural style present at the shrines is quite characteristic of its time. This is a nice location too. Kanade, go around and get a good shot of the whole place. Mm-hmm. Yagamo and Kanade start filming the environment. That's when Magari and Hotoa return to from their visit deeper into the grounds. Director, there's a small main building. That's crazy. Crazy in what way? There's a whole wall decorated with dolls, and there's a bamboo pinwheel all over the front. Kinda creepy. They're doing a doll burial ceremony? Those dolls have been dedicated to the shrine, so there's nothing scary about them. 
but the way they're all lined up neatly is kind of, you know. Yeah, it kind of makes you feel like, like you're being watched. Whoa. Eep. The sudden sound of a throaty voice behind friends Magari and Hitoa. When they turn around, they see Abuse and Manami, who hadn't noticed who they hadn't noticed approaching. Manami must have found their reaction amusing as she tries to hide her smile. Sorry for surprising you like that. Don't worry, we're fine. Yeah, not surprised at all. I see, that's good. Right, there's something I need to tell you. What is it? We heard our third director, Kentaro Yamagishi. Heard of him? Kentaro Yamagishi. Yeah, I know of him. He's a young but influential, energetic director. Indeed, the three of us will be competing to see who can make the better film for this project. Who can best depict the radiance of life and the abyss of death? Let's see if you can be the last man standing. You two are formidable opponents, but I'm gonna give it everything I got. Looking forward to seeing you at your best. My pleasure. Also, what is it? Have you two picked out your actresses? Of course, after you picked Amakata, we chose from the remaining two. So, who did you pick, Director Ibuse? Kazumi Ishikawa. She's a veteran, and I've worked with her several times, so I know what she's like. I see. So you picked the vet veteran actress. Good. For some reason, Yagamo looks relieved as he nods over and over. I kind of wonder about that third choice. Who could it possibly be? Because judging from Yagamo's expressions so far, I feel like it's family. And that leads me to believe that Ryo might be his sister. Again, I'm not sure yet, this is just a theory. A game theory. Confused, Abuse looks at him dubiously. So aside from Hitoa and Kazumi Ishikawa, what do you think of the third actress? Hmm? I was just asking about your criteria for picking out actresses. For reference, yeah. The third one, she seemed kind of lacking in sensitivity. Lacking in sensitivity? Yes, in dramatic stories about murder and whatnot, people look for the expression of emotions that are normally suppressed. And with that in mind, she seemed to be lacking in the sort of sensitivity I want for my film. Ah. Uh, in any case, I think her overflowing vitality can truly shine depending on the work she's given. So in that sense, it's a problem of compatibility, and does not mean she's worthless in any way. I see. I guess that makes sense. Did you have any thoughts about her? Not really. Hmm? You and Amakata seem to be working well together, Yagamo. You think so? Happy to hear it. Yes, it appears that way. I'm glad I convinced you to include a younger actress candidate. You mean... Our director was initially planning on nominating uh, veteran actresses only. I told him it'd be hard for a new director to work with a veteran, so he ended up nominating younger actresses too. So it's thanks to you two that we got at least one younger candidate? I only asked for younger actress to be included. Director Abuse is the one who made the selection. It's a big help. Still, it's a bit rough to use a veteran actress for my TV drama debut. Really? As long as I didn't overstep my place, I'm glad. Manami smiles. Unlike Magari and Hitoa, she has a mature aura. Yagamo can't help but blush. Now then, it's about time we move on. Let's go, Hashima. Yes, sir. We've seen what we wanted to see in Suwano. You guys stand here? Yeah, there's still some places we want to see. I see. Best of luck to you. Thanks. Yagamo bows his head, Abuse and Minami leave. Once they're far away, Magari murmurs. You know, those teams seem like an adulterous couple. That's rude. They can't help but laugh at the remark. Even Hitoa has her hand up against her mouth as she stifles a laugh. 
Hmm. Wow, how far, how far do these Tori go? Studio Yagamo passes through the Tori corridor of Taikodani Inari Shrine, one of the five biggest Inari shrines in Japan. As they pass under Tori, surrounded by greenery as crickets chirp, they feel like another world. Look, they're so different. You're right, it was so plain back then. There weren't any Tori at the time. Toa and Magari have fun as they compare images on their phones to the sights seen today. Yagamo peeks from behind to see they're looking at the 100 views map they saw yesterday. What's that? 100 views to our app. She and I found it this morning, so we downloaded it. It syncs to your GPS to show you where each of the hundred views were sketched. Huh. Katoa looks... Looks like that app works with Instagram. Let's take a selfie. Yeah, let's do it. The girls take a selfie with a Tori corridor as if they were sisters. Yagamo smiles and sighs in relief. I was worried about them after yesterday, but they seem fine. Once they finally clear the Tori Corridor, they reach the Inari Shrine. These grounds sure are spacious. The Tori Corridor suddenly opens up to a wide area where wind blows. The main shrine is solemn and fitting of the title of one of the five biggest shrines in Japan. Most people only visit from the front, but they say you can get closer to the gods from the back. Looks like they recommend visiting from the back if you want to pray for a greater blessing. Two women, presumably tourists, cheerfully show each other their booklets. They must be collecting shoe-in seal stamps. That's a, apparently a popular trend these days. What's interesting about it is how it's got that stamp collector component to it. That sign says car blessing area. You can drive a car all the way over here? Apparently, if you come from the side opposite the Tori corridor, you can get it here by car. But if you're gonna visit here, you might as well go through the Tori corridor, you know? I guess so. Passing underneath the Tori with your own two feet seems more sacred too. Now that we're here, why don't we go pray? Right? Yeah, we just got through a scary event, so it might be nice. You're right. We might be location scouting, but we still are going to shrines, so we might as well. You got a point. Upon Hitoa's suggestion, they pray at the shrine. But among the group, Magari makes an odd face. Hmm? What's wrong? Just wondering, since we're visiting shrines, but how much do you put in the offertory, Hitoa? I put always put in a hundred yen. Me too, but you know, what's wrong? I haven't seen you toss any silver coins, director. I think they've all been copper. Copper? No way, I'm not a kid. I wouldn't be stingy enough to only offer ten yen. Really? Was I just seeing things wrong? Definitely. It probably only looks like that because of the light. Well, I guess. There's no way that you'd be that much of a miser, right, Director? Right. Magari and Yagamo share a laugh, but Yagamo seems to be sweating a bit. Hmm? A lone woman gazing at the streets of Suwano from the shrine grounds catches Yagamo's eye. Did we meet her at Kuromochi's house? What was her name? It was Shiba, wasn't it? That's it. Shiba. Shiba turns around and rushes at the sound of her name. You're the guest from yesterday. Uh, Yagamo, was it? Yes, I'm Yagamo. You feeling okay? Yeah, I'm fine, thanks to you. My head hurts a little, but I was discharged this morning. Dr. Kuromochi should be discharged this afternoon, too. I see. Well, at least it wasn't serious. Shiba and Kuromochi directly breathed in what seems to be chlorine gas, so they were immediately sent to the hospital. 
Fortunately, their condition wasn't too serious, as Shiva seems visibly fine and symptom-free. By the way, what are you doing here, Shiva? I went to Dr. Kuramochi's house, but I couldn't get in due to the investigation. I guess that figures. Just sort of wandered around nearby, and besides, look. Shiba walks over to the edge of the shrine grounds and points. You can see all of Sawano from here. I love the view. You're right, it is a nice view. I know, right? Shiba furrows her eyebrows a bit. They follow her gaze to see... Is that Kuramochi's house? You can see the police cars parked outside. Near the edge of the hill and level ground, you can clearly see Kuramochi's house where they visited just yesterday. On closer inspection, in addition to police cars, there are officers swarming like ants. The site is like a black stain on an otherwise beautiful view in the hearts of all present. Right, Shiba, how do you know Kuramochi exactly? Are you the housemaid or something? Me? I'm kind of like a maid. Kind of like a live-in student laborer without the live-in student laborer as in the student laborers in the Meiji era the ones that worked for room and board something like that I attend to Dr. Kuramochi's history seminars at the university on weekends I pretend to be a student laborer so it's like a part-time job huh probably not worth it for the money though it's not hard work just running errands for Dr. Kuramochi and Kuramochi and his wife. The biggest draw is free access to rare documents in his archive. He's got valuable academic books that you just can't buy on a student budget, you see. So it's for both work and study? Exactly. Sorry if it, it was abrupt, but were you at Kuramochi's house all day yesterday too? Yes, as always, I got to the professor's house in the morning, until you all came along. Did you hear anything out of place, or see an anyone coming in or out? You're asking the same things as the police. Shiva's expression suddenly clouds over upon hearing Yagama's question. Yagama does his best to give her a pleasant smile as he continues. Sorry if that was a touchy subject, but now that we're involved, we're curious about the case. You don't have to talk le if you're uncomfortable. Well, I already told the detectives yesterday, and I don't really know much, so I might as well. You don't really know much? Yesterday, the professor said he was eating out for lunch, so he left around 1pm. At the time, his wife said she was feeling bad, so she was going to rest. So I read books in the archive after that, so as to not disturb her. So I don't know anything other than that. I see. Well, if that's all you know, that's all you know. I didn't hear anything in particular from when the professor left to when you all arrived. I see. We arrived just before 6pm, so we don't know how Kuramochi's wife was doing from 1 to 6. Actually, I did check up on her once. At 2.30. No, maybe a little before that. The professor called to ask and asked to check on her since he was worried. If it was around 2.30, then that means... That was right before we called to meet up at Yasaka Shrine, huh? If his wife wasn't feeling well, it would make sense he'd check on her at his destination. So, what happened? The professor said not to wake her up, to look through the small window, which I did. You can see some of the wife's room from the hallway through the small window. How was she? Nothing stood out. Couldn't see her face, but she was quietly resting in a rocking chair. She wasn't slouching or anything? No, she was in perfect resting posture. Hmm. When we saw her body in the room, her posture suggested she died after a painful struggle. So basically, that means she was still alive when Shiba peeked into the room. When do you think we can go back inside the professor's home? It really depends on the police. But the on-scene investigations typically start wide and narrow in scope, so you should be able to go in soon, with the exception of the wife's room. Is that how it works? Hmm. Hopefully that's everything over here.
when he spots Studio Yagamo, Takano rushes over. Hello, Yagamo. I heard things got out of hand. Sorry about that. I never thought something like that would happen at Dr. Kuramochi's house. Don't mention it. We're just stopping by. No need to apologize. Thank you, but still, I was shocked when I heard the news this morning. Were you acquainted with Kuramochi's wife? No, we never met her, but heard she was beautiful. Yeah, she was probably beautiful enough for rumors to spread about her. Yagmo recalls what he witnessed. Why did such a beautiful woman have to meet such a tragic end? Now that we've been dragged into this, I can't rest until the culprit has been caught. Back again? Sorry, we're back. No, don't worry about it. Anyway, yesterday was rough, huh? Can't believe what happened at Kuramochi's. Sorry you got dragged into it. Must be tough. You know, we got dragged into it? Well, it's a small town. Rumors spread pretty quick. They say a news crew got there before the police. That's not quite right. I guess it's just the nature of rumors. Yagmo can't help but smile. In... It's uncertain if the rice dealer noticed or not, but he continues with a serious look. You see, everybody's worried about what's happening with this year's Hoshii festival, since we just had another strange death in such a small town. Huh? What do you mean another? You're not aware? There's a man named Seiya Ito who lived in a small house near here, but last night he was found to have hung himself. Everyone exchanges glances. The two unnatural deaths on the same day in such a small town. Seems too much of a coincidence. Director, let's go check out Ito's house. They must be feeling the same way. Magari and Hitoa nod at Yagama's suggestion. Interesting. Probably on Sawano Streets. But we'll check out the station first. Tourists wanting to see steam locomotive Yamaguchi are standing around. Perhaps it's arriving soon. The ones with the crazy camera setups must be hardcore fans, huh? That guy must have more expensive equipment than we do. Okay. Following the directions of the Yoshinaga owner, they go to the house of suicide victim Seiya Ito. Without much trouble, they find the house right be behind Yoshinaga. Is that it? The cops are here. The police are likely investigating the suspicious circumstances around the death. There are police cars parked outside the house, which is sealed off with police tape. Officers are patrolling the area. Hmm. You guys again. Studio Yagma has been spotted filming again. The de detectives they saw at Kuramochi's house start rushing over. What a pain. Let's run. Right. Okay. Without looking back at the shouting detectives, they run away at full speed. Then I guess the mansion is open? Kuramochi should be coming back soon, right? Studio Yagmo approaches the mansion, ready to run from the police if they get caught. But suddenly they hear people arguing. What's going on? Huh. They find... Kuramochi loudly arguing with someone in front of the gate. They get in each other's faces until the officers step in. Hey, cut it out. Get away from each other. Get off of me. This man... This man's younger brother, he... What are you talking about? Don't blame your wi wife's infidelity on me. Stop it. Stop it right now, Ito. Among the men is a familiar face. That's Tokima, the man we met earlier at Yasaka Shrine, right? Yeah, I don't recognize the man arguing with Kuramochi, though. Tokima taught, uh, called him Ito, but isn't that the name of the guy who committed suicide last night? That must be Seiya Ito's older brother, Kuramochi and the man called Ito. 
Both of them are too emotional right now to pay the police trying to stop them any he heed. Studio Yagma quietly watches them at a distance. Your younger brother has no place in this house. That rotten womanizer, making passes at a married woman without any self-respect. Bullshit. If anyone's making passes at anyone, it's your whore of a wife. Phrase memorized. What's going on? What sort of relationship did Kuramochi's wife have with Seiya Ito, who committed suicide? Things heat up even further between the men as Yagmo and the others watch. Eventually, the police get fed up with the scuffle and pry the two apart. Ito seems to have given up when the officers block his way, and Tokima drags him. Things got really violent, huh? Indeed. Looks like there is some connection between Seiya Ito's suicide and Kuramochi's death. I don't want to go poke my nose into that mess. In any case, it doesn't look like we can talk to Kuramochi today. Let's go back. It's gotten dark. Let's head back to the inn. Yoshinoya. After dinner, Studio Yagamo gathers at the inn room to check the footage they shot today. That's when they hear a woman's voice from the other side of the door. Excuse me, Mr. Yagamo? You have guest. Guest? Is it Director Abuse? Couldn't be. Yagamo hesitates for a second. Before he can answer, the door opens and two men stomp into the room. Oh, it's them again. Pardon the intrusion. Excuse us. The cops, uh, detectives from this afternoon. I'm Assistant Inspector Misawa with the Shimane Prefectural Police Investigation Division. And I'm Takumi Kesino with the same division. After Misawa's introduction, the young detective smugly refers to himself as Kesino. Kesino? Is I am on the case. Sounds like you're quite important then. Well, you're the one in charge of the case? That's way higher up than Assistant Inspector. At such a young age, too. You're super elite. Wait, so the younger detective's in charge? Wait, 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 no. You got it all wrong. The kid's last name is Keishino. It's just a pun on his name. He's just an ordinary officer. Is that it? For crying out loud. Stop pretending you're my superior. Sorry, sir. When Misawa smacks him, Keishino rubs his head and apologizes. Upon seeing that, Yagmo sighs in exasperation. Uh, could you take your comedy bit elsewhere? We're kind of busy here. It's not a comedy bit, and we got business with you concerning this case at the Kuramochi residence. Business, huh? We already did an interview. Police interviews aren't a one-and-done deal. Besides, that's not where you're why we're here today. Hand it over. Misawa motions with his open hand. Yagamo tilts his head in confusion. Hand what over? The tape. Hand it over. You were rolling camera the day f for that location scouting thing, right? You filmed your discovery of Miss Kermochi's body, didn't you? Nah, come on, you'd really think we'd... Not just the tape. Hand it over. Hand it all over. Could be a clue. We won't take no for an answer. We'll confiscate all your equipment if you want to play that way. Uh. In the end, unable to defy Misawa. Studio Yagamo surrenders all of their tapes, including what was in the van. There is now a pile of everything they've taped si since their arrival in Suwano. It looks like that's all of it. Fascism, this is fascism, I tell you. Shut up, you can't even spell that word. Huh? We'll take good care of these tapes. You can have them back after the investigation. Keishino, take these away. Yes, sir. Misawa commands Keishino as he calmly leaves the room. Keishino bows and chases after them, tapes in tow. They took all our precious tapes away. Natoa quietly murmurs, unable to hide her regret. Yagamo can only slightly stare at the door the detectives left through. 
Yagama Part 2, Chapter 3. Wow, were those some defective detectives? Exactly, they really thought that was enough to confiscate all the tapes. I know, right? Don't they realize how much data you can store in a memory stick these days? Eh. The next morning, Megari and Yagumo secretly checked the film data in the van. While the cartoon laugh may be excessive, the fact of the matter is they backed up all the film data onto a memory stick beforehand. That's enough clowning around for now. What footage do we need? The footage of Miss Kuromochi's body. There might be a clue to tell us if it, it was murder or suicide. Kinda tough to look at her like that again. Why are you fo so fixated on this case anyway? As I said before, we're just a film studio. Because... You don't have to talk if you don't want to I trust you, director. Sorry, Magari. As soon as the ten-year-old's project restarts, an incident like this happens. Is it a coincidence or an inevitability? I can't help but assume the latter, which means that solving this case may help expose the truth of why the project was shelved ten years ago. As Yagamo ponders to himself, Megari expertly searches through the film on her laptop. Eventually, her hand stops and the screen shows the site from the day before yesterday. That metal basin really bugs me. What about it? Even if she was trying to commit suicide by mixing detergents, why such a large basin? That's a good point. There must be some kind of reason behind it. There were several long scars on her slightly exposed chest. It must have been scratches on herself in her final moments. Chlorine gas wrecks with your respiratory system, which means in a way too painful which means it's a way too painful of an option for suicide. If it were me, I'd choose something less painful. There are a lot easier ways to go, especially when it's your own terms. Can't see you ever committing that, director. Of course not. I plan on living, I plan on peacefully passing away at the tender age of 100. Hmm? Yagamo murmurs as he looks by the body's feet. What's wrong? Kind of hard to see due to the desk window. Shadow. But there's something on the ground there. Looks like a scrap of paper. Let's magnify it a bit. Migari zooms in and enhances on the scrap of paper. Two or three zooms and several filters later, the scrap of paper becomes legible. When Hoshi eyes dedicated to Yusaka. Phrase memorized. What does that mean? It means when the Hoshiai Festival procession arrives at Yosaka Shrine, but... The question is who wrote that and why is it on the ground? The handwriting looks strange. Can't even tell if it's a man or woman's. Hmm. The letter in a crude childish handwriting Perhaps to hide the identity of who wrote it. There's a mark on her skin, like a bruise, on the nape of her neck. Is that a birthmark or a bruise? There's no blood, and it looks like it wasn't a fresh wound. Which means it probably isn't related to the case. Something that appears to be an old scar is on her shoulder. Doesn't look like a fresh wound, so it's probably not related. There's an expensive looking drawer, as you'd expect from an old family. There's nothing particularly suspicious. Huh? Megari raises her voice when she magnifies the chest area of the corpse. What's wrong? Hold on a sec. Megari moves into the mouse and to zoom in a bit further. Once the pattern on the kimono disappears, it becomes clear what's unsettled Megari. That's... 
blends into the pattern on her kimono, but it looks like a necklace. Necklace with a kimono? Is that normal? I'm no expert in kimono etiquette, but I don't think it is. Migari spins the mouse cursor around the pendant attached to the end of the necklace. Doesn't look like a brand name item. Looks kind of crude and cheap. Seems out of place for a wife of a rich man to wear something so cheap. Migari, that necklace bothers me. Can you print it out? Roger. It's rare to find metal basins like these in modern households. I guess it's not rare for an old family, though. Kind of feels odd to lug something like this all the way to your room just to commit suicide. Assuming this letter is from someone, who even writes letters anymore? We got email and tons of social media, but she didn't want anyone else to find out, like her husband, maybe? There's tons of ways to hide that, like how that line work contact you have is just that girl you met at the bar director? Who told you that? You did, just now. Now shut up and focus. After examining the film all the way th through, Yagama sighs. We missed a lot of details that day. Good thing we filmed it. Thanks, Magari. I know it takes a lot of guts to look at the video. You're a big help. Well, I somehow managed to be lying to myself that it was staged, but it really was tough. Sorry. That's enough footage investigation for now. Let's go meet up with the others and head out. Roger that. A suspicious man suddenly stands between y Studio Yagamo and Yasaka Shrine. You. Is that... you know him, Hitoa? He's probably an actor known as Nengo 6. Nengo 6? You're him, right? It's time for the first Baki Baki Shamane quiz. He ignored me? The quiz is about Suwano's other famous shrine, the Taikodani Inari Shrine. Inari is usually written as rice load, but why Takodani Inari writes it as a rice blessing? Why? It's a blessed place, it doesn't have a loading zone, it is built by Lord Inari and not the go god Inari. Uh. It's a blessed place? That's correct. Long ago, a man who lost the castle key prayed at Taiko Dani Inari, and soon he found the key. Moved by that blessing, the lord of the castle renamed the shrine accordingly. So if you need to find something you lost, why not try praying at the shrine too? With that, I must make my exit. Let's meet again elsewhere. The man says that and disappears like the wind. He just kind of said what he wanted to say and scrammed, huh? The Enigma. Is he a friend or foe? I don't think he's either. Alright, I think I'll save and we'll continue this next time. So, uh, thanks for watching and see you guys then. Bye.